Hey there, brain spores. Unless you've succumbed to the cordyceps, you've definitely got the brain power to figure out that The Last of Us TV show has dropped. On today's run through the infected zone, we're covering how the new show blows fan favorite The Walking Dead out of the water, as well as discussing all the changes made from the original game. Watch till the end to scavenge enough supplies to make it through. For those not in the know, The Last of Us was a critically acclaimed video game that received a controversial sequel back in 2020 that left fans divided. All fans are a united house today though, as we come together to welcome in a new wave of series fans in this TV retelling. In case you've been living in a bomb shelter for the past decade, The Last of Us is a story about zombies, survival, and family. Really, what's not to love about that kind of story years on from COVID's emergence? We know there's a virus out there, we're stuck inside with our loved ones, we put a few more quotes around the word loved, and we buy a lot of DoorDash, you know how it is, so we're all primed for a close-knit zombie survival story. The saviors are finished. We took down their outposts. Negan and his people are trapped by walkers. It has been a while since The Walking Dead had its cultural apex, so the space is wide open for a big nationwide push into this particular type of apocalypse. The Walking Dead is a well-loved classic for a high body count, with Game of Thrones tier stakes where anyone can die. Of course, for stacking bodies like a Lannister, there is a price. Fans of those particular actors and characters would slough off alongside the dead starlings. Several reboots, sequel series, and side stories ultimately bogged down the continuity. It was no longer an institution, and with it being impossible to keep up on, you could no longer chat up random other TV watchers about the show reliably. The Last of Us has a strong emotional core, a clear plotline that's been set out for it by the games, and a fairly tight cast of characters to deeply invest in. Will it run half as long as The Walking Dead? Probably not. That's the trade-off though. Everyone will be able to partake, watch, and talk about it. We'll get back to that point about the plotline when we cover what's been changed. For now, stay in the bunker, enjoy the baked beans, and buckle up for a fungal ride. Quiet streets, stirring audio cords, and a blare of sirens in the distance give us an impactful gaze into the world of The Last of Us, the world after the zombie apocalypse. There's a sense of the calm before the storm as The Last of Us begins. It's a big zombie thriller, and we know the genre well. In many ways, it gives us just what we're expecting. The chances begin as we see the fungal forms of the zombies and realize we're in for a close dad story. They've got 10 to 15 million dollars to make each episode, by the way, so you can expect great value. Much has been made of the fact that zombie killing can appear much like slaughtering random wounded civilians. Fans of the genre don't see it that way, but for many, it is a turnoff peculiar to the genre. We circle back now to our round-faced horrors for the save. The cordyceps look distinctly non-human. That helps maintain the sense of otherworldliness to the violence and invests otherwise skittish potential fans. Episode 1 is a slow build that engulfs us in the story of the world, and that's going to be important for a drama based on not a wide cast, but a narrow view of family. Intricate details are leaping off us on the set. You really see the sets, like Sarah's teen bedroom, line up with the game and you can see they brought this to life. If you're enjoying it for the first time or watching it back for the first go around, you'll notice that the CGI is sharp but doesn't make the world slick. Resident Evil has a shiny apocalypse but The Last of Us gives us gritty and dirty reality. While fans of The Walking Dead can point to a lot of moments in that series that could compete. Do they have a cute little frog playing piano? Yeah? No? I thought so. The sound design comes together to give a fluid shift between tension and melancholic relaxation. Just don't make something happen.
you get to really hang out with the characters and see how shit their lives are. You might expect with a small cast that we wouldn't worry if anyone dies. But honestly, it's all incredibly intense when the clickers, as they call them, come on screen. The small core cast doesn't drag out their lines or try to fill dead air. They let the world exist and enjoy the shitty silence in it. Fans of the game know Joel's trademark gruff attitude is an iconic aspect of the series. This before. And whatever happened to me is it's the, the key, key to, to finding find the vaccine. That's what this is. We've heard this a million times. Vaccines, miracle cures, none of it works ever. Fuck you, man. I didn't ask for this. You and me both. This isn't gonna end well, Ted. But Pedro Pascal, the actor, has actually never played the games. Part of the reason is to never copy what the games did, but rather embody the character on his own without doing an impersonation. Don't tell him what happens in game two, guys. Major spoilers. And speaking of spoilers, don't we already know how this story goes? Are they just going to film it level by level? Mm, not quite. Executive producer Craig Mazin has talked through their approach to adaptation in a recent interview. In Mr. Mazin's view, adaptation always comes down to choices. You can talk your head off about decisions, but for him, no matter the debate, he's got a simple question. What do I love? Well, that's a pretty tough question to answer, or maybe it's simple with a lot of answers. But in the end, he finds a way to weigh highlights against each other. He feels the runner-up question is how a passive medium changes the story. Run, run. Last of Us, you shoot the zombies yourself. In the TV show, not so much. Being stunned by a moment won't slow the story down or get Joel killed to restart. There is one run through, no reloads, and unless you want to pause, there's no slowing down. It's a fluid experience, and that's part of why they put those breathers in. They wanted to recreate those moments of traversing the levels on your own, taking in the world on your own. Craig dug deeper on that. He said the answer is to crack into the interactive story, find what inspires them, and put it into the story in its essence, if not literal form. Joel is going to fight the clickers, and more than that, he's going to take care of Ellie. Their tender moments together are brought to life in a whole new light on the show, and that makes it incredibly lifelike in a way the game could struggle to achieve at times. Don't worry about it being inauthentic to the Naughty Dog original though. Neil Druckmann, a creator of the original game story, has been brought on board to write and produce. Whichever way the story tilts, though we may see some deviance in particulars, we can know that this is a tale told by the original creators with the spirit in mind. And in case you were wondering if there are intentional surprises in there, he actually says they never deviated for the purpose of surprising the audience. We look forward to seeing how the whole story shakes out. Until then, put a round through the like button and apply anti-fungal cream with a vengeful scrub to the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with our channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.